right. I'm an adult. I still drink chocolate milk. Hey guys, welcome to an episode of Initial DIY Mods. Today we're covering quite a few things. Nope, no we're not. We're covering two things. Our tank for the intercooler. Uh, basically the intercooler is a water and air intercooler, so you do need a reservoir. So I decided to go trunk mount for that to keep as much space. Obviously I don't have anything left in the engine. And try to keep as much of my trunk as possible. And the second thing that we're working on is that we've upgraded our injectors to 1000cc injectors. We got those from Deutschworks. Our friend C0 Media hooked us up with some injectors. He's got great prices. Check them out. His site, c0media.com. The dude beat everybody's prices. And I mean, everybody. Couldn't even find him on eBay for that cheap. So give him a call, email, whatever. And uh, if you need any parts, let him know. So we're just finishing up our preparations for the larger turbo that we're going to have installed here soon. Let's get to it. All right. So what we got, we've gone ahead, we've disconnected our feed line into our fuel rail. Uh, we disconnected the battery so that the OEM mini Cooper pump doesn't kick on for any weird reasons. Um, and then we've disconnected our return feed, which is now over here. Uh, we've cleaned up as much fuel so it didn't make too much of a mess. Now we get a pop off. I think these are 12 mils. And then we're going to go ahead and pull the whole fuel rail out to put in our new DW injectors from Deutschworks. Uh, 1000cc injectors. Currently, I did a stock replacement to diagnose the original engine issues, uh, which turned out to be a bad a burnt out injector. And I didn't want to have to retune it just to run it for five minutes. So I got 450cc injectors for that. So it's time to upgrade. Um, currently still stock turbo. We'll rescale the injectors. And of course, inside is the new turbo. So we got our injectors in there and now we're going to put in our fuel rail. I don't know if I can do this one handed and we'll have to turn it as we slot it in and make sure the O-rings don't bind on any of those injectors. All right, so we've snugged them up just by hand, uh, very lightly, two fingers. And now what we need to do is torque them down. The spec is seven to nine foot pounds. We've already hooked up our connectors, but make sure they didn't wiggle out. Back here. And then now we need to reconnect our return line and our feed line over here and reconnect the wires and stuff like this sensor. And then we're done. Then we need to rescale our ECU tune so that everything runs on these larger injectors because we are pushing about two and a half times the fuel now. So the original map will not work. All right, so what we have here, this really sketchily built wood structure basically going to be the inside of our tank and it's going to allow us to pull some of this um, fleece and stretch it over and get all of our contours and everything looking good. From there we're going to fiberglass it and that'll be our structure for our, uh, we're sorry, we're gonna put resin and hardener in it and that's gonna give us our structure. And then from there, we will end up doing um, fiberglassing all the outside. And uh, of course, we're gonna cut out and pull out all the wood too, so not gonna be floating around. And then we'll get our lines and everything set, cut and put them in the right spots. All right, I still have my mask on, so it might be hard to hear, but that's uh, me getting all the seams, cutting them down. So we've got a little bit of a gap there. That's about like a centimeter, um, which is fine. I cut that a little bit easier to check fitment and stuff. A couple of gaps here, a little bit here. I have this on here to kind of uh, hold the weight down to get some of that tension in there. Again, small little gap there, but for the most part, no real gaps and nothing huge to worry about. And now we just gotta lay some fiberglass and get everything sealed. It should be good. All right, so we got a piece of duct tape and we wrapped the duct tape underneath this uh, circular piece that we had cut out before uh, and then went across the other side. So this is all one piece. And basically we did that to hold this from falling in 
and then we went ahead and taped over that so to hold it in place and the main point of that is so we can actually change from our three inch hole to a four inch hole and that will allow us a much bigger area to get our arm in to do fittings and to seal some of this inside area that's kind of hard to reach we're going to go back and fix some of these areas too but our main issue right now is doing the bottom so that everything is nice and sealed all right so we added a few extra layers because it got snagged last time and now what we're actually going to do first is spin it backwards so that it gently cuts the tape that we don't need And now we need a new battery. So obviously our stepper bit can't get all the way in, um, but the outside's basically perfect right now. It's chamfered nice, and uh, it's got a good flat spot to make a seal with the O-ring. Uh, so now we just need to kind of cut out the, uh, the inner fiberglass there and some of that old cloth from the structure. All right, so this is how we're actually testing to make sure nothing's leaking. We basically fill it up with water. Uh, we connected our hose in a loop there, so those fittings we can test to make sure they don't leak in the top or the bottom, make sure we don't get any sort of leaking or seepage in the bottom of the tank or anything. And after a couple of days, we're going to call it uh, pretty much good. We've got a little kind of a sealing ring on the top there, um, although it's not perfectly level, so it doesn't actually seal. But if you need to put your hand in there or anything like that, it just kind of keeps you from getting cut by the fiberglass. And what we're going to end up doing, we've got this aluminum plate. It's eighth inch thick and we're basically gonna have to cut it down to size, but basically it's gonna have a peg. Uh, we're gonna do a straight cut. I, th I was thinking originally to do a circle, but I think that's probably gonna be too hard to get perfect, uh, cause my OCD is gonna just murder me. So instead we're probably just gonna do a square and I'll just have to make a tab there like that. Cut this thing straight across, probably maybe a quarter inch up. So we meet up with the hinge here and then we'll just rivet it to the hinge and uh, call it good. And what we'll do is we'll put some uh, foam rubber tape on the backside here, and that'll help us seal down to the surface there. We've got this little tiny washer that we're gonna put on our rivet. And we're going to put our rivet through the top so that it looks nice and clean. And then we'll put the back, uh, the little washer on the bottom underneath the hinge, and that's going to kind of keep it from uh, basically making it fill up that hole there. All right, now the best part, pulling off the protective coating, which I did put the uglier, more damaged side underneath, but. Nice. Now one thing to note, uh, I also knew that bolt wasn't gonna be long enough, but that is okay for now. We'll just get a longer bolt and we'll throw a little wing, wing nut on there. Just to go ahead and use some of this marine rubber weather seal, uh, we're going to put basically just a square on the inside of this lid and that is going to seal it up. It's a lovely video, wasn't it? Finishing out my chocolate milk just now. All right guys, next time on Initial DIY Mods, we are going to prepare everything else for the new turbo that we have. It's a upgraded 16G turbo from Mitsubishi. We basically took a 20G wheel and threw it into a um, TDO5 housing um, and we clipped the turbine 15 degrees. I say we, I mean I bought it like that from a guy that rebuilds turbos. Before we put it in the car, we need to make sure that the car stops leaking oil. So we're going to go ahead and pull the engine. We're going to do a full tear down um, to inspect everything, get a good look at everything, um, place the head gasket while we're there. But we're basically going to take everything out, take it all apart, clean it, and fix everything that the previous owner did uh, to make it all leak in the first place.
I really want to throw the bigger turbo on there, but we can't go to the drag strip and actually do a test and tune and drive the car without actually having the car not leak. So we need to fix all that stuff first. Then we can finally have fun doing skids and going rally racing and hitting the drag strip and the dyno. And of course, no dyno operator likes their their place just being filled with uh, with oil from shit cars that are leaking everywhere. So. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button to initial DIY mods and hit that bell button to receive notifications for when new videos come out. They do come out every couple weeks, hopefully going down to every week soon. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Write in the comments why you hate me uh, or, you know, ask any questions, anything you want more details on. If you're curious what I'm doing throughout the week, or if you want to see some inside things that don't get put onto the YouTube videos, check out Instagram. There's a lot of cool photos and videos there of sort of the in-between of all the videos. You can see everything there, and of course, not everything makes it to the final video, so check that out. All right, I'm done. Break my foot. No, yeah, no, that thing's annoying as fuck. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to... It's hard to hit sometimes, too. Yeah, okay, I'm good. Are you recording? Oh, long ago. <laughs> okay.